If relationships are the real currency in life, if referrals are the lifeblood of business, how do we, the entrepreneurs, the small business owners, compete in this ever-changing, fast-paced world? How do we become more so we can attract more? My name is Curtis Lucy, and I'm your host. Those are the questions, and in this podcast, we will reveal the secrets. Well, welcome everybody to another episode of Referral Secrets. Oh boy, do we have an episode for you. We have Mr. Daryl Davis, over 30 years in real estate. And in this episode, make sure you listen to all the way through because he shares the top three things that you can do in today's crazy market to get your offer accepted, as well as the sleeping giant Well, they're a giant Zillow and they are sleeping on a few different things that could really affect your your future of your business and a couple things you can do to help combat that. So that's in the second part. The first half is all about amazing Daryl Davis and what he does and how he does it and more importantly, who he is as a human being. So enjoy this episode of Referral Secrets. Who is Daryl Davis? And please share please share your story if you don't mind. Well, thanks, Curtis, and thanks for having me. And this is awesome that you're doing this for the industry. So thank you for doing it. Um, I I, I go way back. I mean, I started real estate when I was 19 years old. I got into it because um, actually I wanted to be an actor. I was going to college. I was a theater major. I was doing auditions in New York City. So, but the joke in acting is when you tell somebody you're an actor, they would ask, oh, really? what restaurant are you playing? <laughs> so um, I didn't want to be uh, serving tables and waiting tables, although I did do that as well. But anyway, I got into real estate because I heard it was a great profession where you can make a lot of money and uh, but make your own hours at the same time. And that was important to me, Curtis, because I, a little bit extra, I, I had been living on my own since I was 16. I was an emancipated minor. I had my own apartment. So still put myself through high school and then college. So I've always been a survivor, a self-starter. I had to make sure I took care of myself and my life. So when I was in college studying to be an actor, I also wanted to support myself. So that's how I got into real estate. I chose real estate for that. And uh, I was really successful very soon, got out of real estate, out of uh, acting and, uh, uh, I was doing six transactions a month as an agent. Then uh, a guy m- met me and he thought I was awesome. And he, he said, you, I want you to be my manager. So uh, his name is Max. And we opened up an office together in Long Island, New York, which became number one our first six months. Then I started doing seminars a few years later and uh, started traveling. And now, uh, 30 years later of speaking and training, I'm sitting here talking to you. Wow, amazing. And, I, and you know, I, I do have to share this and what I appreciate about you. And one of the reasons why I really wanted you on this podcast is because, see, I know that you and Julie, um, you guys run, what is it again online? Uh, oh. Well, it's... Our membership is the power program. I, I yeah, I, I kind of shortened the whole backstory, but um, I got in 1993. I created <clears throat> this uh, year-long process. The concept was called the power program. The concept is it takes 30 days to create a habit, Curtis. So what I did this now this was going back in live seminars. So I thought, well, if it takes 30 days to create a habit, <clears throat> then it makes sense that agents focus on just getting good habits in one aspect of the business. So I sat down and I wrote out, well, what are all the aspects? Well, there's the listing appointment, there's prospecting, there's working with buyers, negotiating, farming stuff. By the time I was done, I had 12 sessions. So I said, wow, let's create, let's do one session a month for 30 days with homework assignments and team building and yada, yada and teach them a bunch of things to focus just on that one aspect of real estate for 30 days, create good habits, come back, learn the next one. That was the birth of the power program in 1993. And um, because of the success, McGraw Hill reached out to me and said, would you write a book based on your winning formula of doubling agents production? So we wrote how to become a power agent real estate. 
which has hit number one status several times on Amazon. And uh, anyway, so then we converted to an online version because of the, um, you know, the pandemic. And anyway, so our power agents, that's our online platform is the power program and our membership. And yeah, so we got- Because I know, I know you have a trademark, the power agent, power agent. That's right. And, and, and I know that they, there's a portal stuff and you got, you and Julie reached out to me and well, our, our team, and I, a lot of the calls don't get to me and my members of our team take care of it. But when they came to me on this one, I was like, okay, let's, let's have a chat. What was cool is that Julie definitely was a great gatekeeper to get me to you. Um, and she asked a lot of great questions. And then she's like, you know, Daryl doesn't beat around the bush. If you want something, it, it, a lot of times. So I, I got on the phone with you and it was, it was a really great conversation. It was very straightforward. The expectations yeah. were there. And I said, you know, this is a guy that I want to work with and I want to partner with and make something happen. And yeah. I really appreciate that about you. And I have a feeling that that ex well, I'm sure that that same attitude goes in with coaching all of your agents. Well, there's, there's, there's two, there's two major criteria that we have um, when we bring on a vendor is number one, is that they have integrity and they're a good company because I tell my students, like I vouch for you. And if mm -hmm. I'm going to vouch for a vendor, then uh, I put my main name behind it. So we have, so that's criteria one. It has to be a good company with integrity. They don't have to be the best company. They don't have to be the perfect company, but they got to have that integrity because if they screw up, they'll clean it up because they have integrity. So to me, that's the, that's the real cornerstone. And then the second thing is that they give a deal or a package to our members, our power agents that nobody else gets. Mm -hmm. So you hit the two points. And um, this is why we are happy with our relationship with you and our students have been using AM cards and they're just loving it so far. And uh, so I'm real happy with, uh, with our relationship. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. And so I want to dive back into this program. And so if you, there's a lot of real coaches out there. And I do understand after doing some research and, and talking to some people in the industry, you're by far we're at the very top um, up there. And because you get results and it, it's very difficult to motivate a volunteer army. <laughs> and when you're yeah, as a manager and you're at an office and you, you can't tell, like one of the great things about real estate is that you know, pretty much anybody can go out there, work hard, get their license and get into real estate. One of the worst mm -hmm. things about real estate is pretty much anybody can study their butt off and pass that exam and get into real estate. So there's all different levels of professionalism in there um, that ranks all over. Like just because you're a realtor doesn't really make you a professional. That's for sure. Cause you pass the test. So what is it that you do um, within your program that you feel has the biggest traction to get people moving towards you know, results? Um, well, I, I think what speaks to, what speaks to our agents that we attract, because every uh, trainer uh, has a style and they mm -hmm. attract a particular type of agent. Mm -hmm. And I won't go into comparing or saying what, what that is for my colleagues, but for us, the type of agent that we attract are, are the, the ones that don't want to be scripted. They don't want to be hard salespeople. We have um, a motto that our power agents live by. There's, it's, um, uh, it's not a mission statement, but it's a little ditty, whatever you want to call it. Power agents don't close people. We coach people. And power agents don't sell people. We serve people. So those are the two big distinctions of the training and the foundation that we have. You know, we're, 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 we're not a fan of scripts because, um, you know, the problem with scripts is what happens if the other person doesn't know their part. <laughs> um, it's called human being, not human doing. And agents that try and do a script, there's a certain amount of inauthenticity that's associated with that. And people pick up on that. So we empower and coach and train agents on how to speak from the heart, not their head, how to articulate mm from that heart and not from some memorized script. So it comes off more authentic, more effective. And um, so I think that's the big thing that, that distinguishes us from some of the other training that's out there. Now we get the same results as, um, as some of the others, but um, it's, it's not as hard. 
uh, it's more enjoyable, you know. So I tell people that, you know, real estate, everything evolves around real estate when you think about it, right? It's like right now you're, you're sitting in, in, in a piece of real estate, as a, so is I. And everybody, when they go to work, they stay, they go home to real estate. It, during the pandemic, they were sheltering in where? In real estate. The White House is on a piece of real estate. There's wars over real estate. Earth is a piece of real estate in the universe. Everything evolves around real estate. So real estate agents are, in, in my opinion, the best profession that anybody be in because the world evolves around it. Mm -hmm. And um, so anyway, I, I, I forgot the question. <laughs> no, you, you, you answered it. You answered it. You know, I get results. You talked about you know, speaking you know, through your heart instead of your head and being more, being very authentic and more conversational rather than scripted. So that is amazing. And now I will that, say, because like, uh, let, let me, let me uh, address the specific, like what gets an agent started? Because that was really the question about how, how, what, how, how, what do I tell them to get them the results? There's, you know, for, there needs to be consistency, right? They need to have good ha work habits. They have to push past fear, um, especially for the new agent. A, a lot of the new agents, what holds them back is their fear of not knowing. There's so much that they don't know, and they know that they don't know that, and that gives them insecurity. And what they have to do is get past that and, 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 and um, find their own uniqueness and what they bring to the table and that whole concept of integrity and passion for serving, not selling. I tell agents, like if a homeowner had a choice be or a buyer, working with an agent that was a top mega producer, uh, but maybe not as empathetic or understanding and somebody who is really empathetic, really understanding, committed, gonna work their tush off for them, regardless of their production, I believe most people will choose the latter. So um, anyway, so that's, that's my thought on that. That's awesome. So this this program that you put together, you tip it, you start it, you would travel around and do these as live events once oh a month. Oh my god, Curtis. Yeah, Curtis, man. It was oh, it was crazy. Um yeah. So here's what we would do, right? A company would hire me or okay. we would pick a city and do a free event. Agents would come, they would get to meet me, they would learn something, a three hour seminar. And during the three hours, we would tell them about the power program. And then they would sign up and, um, you know, the price changed over the years. It kept raising the price. But the agents, even when a company would hire me to come in, the agents still paid their own tuition because they needed to have skin in the game. And so they would pay that and then they would get a manual. They would get a set of cassette tapes. Some people don't know what that is. It's not a DVD. That's all I can tell you. So it was a cassette tape that they would get a whole stack of them. And then I would, Curtis, fly to this, that same class every 30 days for a year Wow! and train all day on one topic. So the first session was always the attitude session. And the reason why that is, is because you know, what we do is based on who we are. And if somebody teaches you how to make a hundred grand, but who you are is 30 grand a year, that's all you're ever gonna make. So the first session was nine to five all day and it was a mental enema that cleared people's heads so they can live from what was possible and get excited about the possibility of what their career could be. That was the first session. Then coming back 30 days, now in between, they had the homework assignments, they had to do activities, they came back. Yeah, bottom line is, Curtis, it was like uh, I was managing an office of agents for a year. And the, they, but, they, but, the hit, but the agents, they doubled their production over their previous year. Some of that was agents from the, that original format. They still say that that was a life-altering experience. That, and I'll tell you something, Curtis, if you talk to those power agents, they are different. You know, because it was, it was not, it was, a, it was 365 day course. And, um, but I couldn't, you know, you just can't do that anymore in today's day and age to do that kind of training. You'd have to charge way too much money 
for somebody of my level to make it worthwhile. I didn't want to have trainers and, and do that. I tried that model. That, that was not for me. So, um, but anyway, uh, yeah, so that, that was the original format. But I will say, this is what I want to say. It was me doing that experience that actually made me a better trainer and coach. You know, I, 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 there's a lot of great speakers and, and coaches in our industry. But for me, I became much better at understanding real estate through that process. Because let me tell you something, when you, when you are training the same group that paid for it for a year, you can't BS your way through that. You can't tell somebody to do something and it's BS because they'll come back at the next class and say, that was, what did you just teach me? That was horrible. So there was a dual accountability. I was holding the students accountable to doing their, their homework assignments. They filled out every month a sheet. It was called an integrity sheet. Again, we're about a lot about integrity in my company culture and in our training. And, um, but they would come back, we grade their sheet and, and we give them the next assignment. But um, what was my point? My point was that that made me a better trainer because I learned also things that I would teach and say, geez, maybe we could tweak that. Maybe we can improve on that. And uh, anyway, so the basis of everything we teach today is through not just my years as a salesperson, but my years of training agents, that format. Well, it's going to be even more powerful when, when uh, after this whole pandemic starts to kind of go when things do open up or getting in rooms, like you're going to be able to get these power agents all together in big rooms instead of smaller rooms. That's going to be fun. That's that's going to be a blast. I, and, plan, uh, to do it. I, I plan to do it a power agent reunion for sure. I want to bring all over the country power agents. got to come here, down here to Florida. Come down here to Florida. We'll, we welcome people down here. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, and, and also, I do know that because I'm on your Facebook community and stuff, so I see some of your sponsored ads. I see things popping up, and you're always you, – there's a, there's a trial. Um, so while we're on that topic right now, why don't you share your, your link, if you don't mind, for the trial? Yeah, so um, it's darylspeaks.com forward slash trial. It's very simple. Daryl Speaks, D-A-R-R-Y-L Speaks.com. Yeah, so our new our our current format now, which has been the format for years, uh, is uh, online. There's weekly webinars, co weekly coaching calls. I will tell you, um, one of my staff oh, it's Julie actually. Julie Julie's been in the industry for a really long time, and when we started first working together, she was blown away by uh, our Monday coaching calls. She said, "There's no other speaker, Daryl, does what you do, which is every Monday." Uh, Curtis, the power agents, they call in on a call and they bring their problem. And so mm. for a couple hours, I'm basically accessible. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a coach. I'm a therapist. I get a lot of questions. And so the agents are putting me on spot there. I had this deal. What should I have said? How do I do this deal? Ba, ba, ba. I'm, I'm emotionally, I'm a challenge with this and thing. And so whatever they bring, my job is to coach them to have a breakthrough during every Monday. And uh, those are really fun, those calls, Curtis, because it keeps me fresh, you know, because I'm creating new techniques when a power agent says, you know, I just had this homeowner say this, what should I have said to them? And I, I'll invent new dialogue. It's, it's fun for me. I love it. So. Well, that's a perfect transition. So first of all, if you're listening to this, go ahead and take a look at darylspeaks.com forward slash trial. Take a look at that if you're liking the content that he's sharing so far. And no, perfect transition because I was going to share. I would like to have like the second portion of this. Let's talk about some challenges in the current market right now and some of the things that you're helping coach some of your power agents through these. So what are, in the market we're in right now, what are some of the biggest challenges that these agents are facing? Wow, I, I'm going to this. If this was like if this was like a news show, like you're going to get some breaking news because I'm going to share something with you. I haven't shared with anybody yet. <laughs> and uh, not even my, not even our students yet. We're going to talk about it tomorrow, though. I, I will tell you the biggest challenge is a, a challenge that agents are not paying attention to. Mm. Everybody's paying attention to virtual and the pandemic. I mean, you know, we're well through the pandemic now, and we're we're finding the cure, and listings are low. So there's a lot of that conversation. But man, oh man, Curtis, there's a sleeping giant that's starting to step up, and and people are just not paying attention, and that's Zillow. Mm. Now I've not been listening. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not uh, against Zillow. I'm just pro agent. 
Um, this is just a company that has changed their business model. And uh, for years, they were saying they're, they're, not, they're not a brokerage. They're not going to compete with agents. They're going to do advertising. They're a media company. And they are a direct competitors right now with the traditional agent. And, uh, and it's becoming, it should be a concern for people. So, you know, one of the things I think that agents should be focused on is getting more actively involved in their MLS. Uh, and how data is put out and how listing agents should be getting credit for their listings because they're, they're losing their business to corporations like that. So anyway, I think that, that I'm really hot on that right now. That's something I'm pretty passionate about. Um, I guess the second thing, though, if I were going to say something that was less political, is yes, getting listings is important for agents. Uh, I, this market has been really dried up for agents when it comes to the listings. And um, you know everything that they can do in that regard is gonna help improve their business as well. So building relationships with people, boots on the ground, face-to-face -face with people. You know, a lot of, Curtis, a lot of agents are spending the money on um, social media and internet ads and, and getting leads that way, which is, good depending on the company you're giving your money to but i think that expression what's old is new again is is so true nowadays and one of the things that is really valuable is direct mail marketing in my opinion i think that agents need to be doing that more going back to that because when you think about it, there was a study done i actually I, i'm not going to share my screen i was just getting ready for a webinar i want to get the stat for you but um yeah, here it is. Uh, from the Direct Marketing Association, they did a study and they found that the, the response rate on email is about 1%. That's the, the number. But when it comes to direct mail, it's actually 9%. Hmm. And, and so it's so much better. And I think the re part of the reason why that is, Curtis, is that when, like I'm sure you're the same way, when you open up an email, or when you open up your, your email reader, the first commitment is to deleting, not opening. There's so much junk, but you wanna clean it up. So you delete, you delete, delete, and then what's left over, you decide if you wanna look at it. When it comes to mail, people are just, they look forward to their mailbox. Like it's almost like Christmas, what's in there? You know, I'm looking forward to it. And um, so I think that's one of the things agents should be focused on to build their listing inventory is to connect with their farm in the market area that way. Door knocking, of course. Of course, using the telephone. I'm big on the telephone. But we got to build inventory. That's key. Yeah, I just had a, an agent that I just saw a post on, on a, a real estate group. And, and he was saying that um, he's in South Florida, which I mean, he, was, he went do some, some safe door knocking, I guess. Uh, but it was to promote his open house in the neighborhood. And he hustled for three days and knocked all of the doors, inviting and everything like that. And the first day he showed up early to open up the house and get everything all set up. And there was a line already down the sidewalk and out down the road. Yeah. So he completely, he had over 200 people in two days come through and it was just, it was priced right, beautiful home and boom, he knocked it out of the park. And when you were just saying that, like, and I just keep seeing things, so he's face to face and let's learn doing that kind of stuff or especially the. The, the mailbox. It's one of the things that we we said recently in a in a couple of we I got interviewed and I was I was sharing that the difference between showing up in somebody's inbox and somebody's mailbox is the difference between being deleted and being remembered. Yes. And, oh, I love and, that. And you said and like so when and that we talk about that obviously a lot with the cards, but like that direct mail, a lot of times they sometimes they just don't throw it away. So even the people that oh, it didn't really work. They might put it in a drawer and pull it out a month later, two months later. And, you know, oh, I remember I put it in that drawer. Let me call that person. There was some kind of trigger on that. So I'm a big, I'm a big advocate of direct mail in all different industries. Well, it's your, it's your business. You should be. And I, I yeah, think more I, personal. I, we don't do the. <laughs> we, we're not about you know the masses. We don't, we don't have that dialed in yet. But yeah, but I am a big fan because I'm especially. I worked for a gentleman that sent over half a million mailers a month and built a wow. nine figure business off of Dan Kennedy, direct response, mailing type stuff, you know, have that big fat claim, have something that you stand behind and market the heck out of it. And I've it always been, a, I've been, a, I've been, since I've been a speaker, I've been a fan of, of Dan Kennedy. May he rest in peace. 
I used to I can see, uh, subscribe I can see to his that. inner circle and get his stuff. Yeah. You both speak speak very straightforward. <laughs> so I appreciate both both of you. So I can see that. <laughs> um, what's another um, What's another challenge that's happening? I uh, oh, you said the sleeping giant Zillow. Oh, question about that. How does an agent not get too distracted with all this stuff and not let that bog down? Because you said attitude obviously is so important. How you show up and who you are. If you let that replay in your head all the time, could that like almost force you to say, maybe this is not the industry for me because I'm going to give it up to Zillow. That's going to take all my future business. Well, I, I think that, well, listen, I, I, I do think based on, listen, first of all, when it comes to Zillow, it's a really hot topic for me right now, only because I've, I've done, I, here's how I said it to my office. If let's say you're a news reporter was hired to do an article on um, the cost of cigarettes, on how they've gone, gone up. Mm -hmm. And in the research of writing it, they found out that there was chemicals added to make people addicted like drug addicts and they try to cover it up like it turned into this whole big thing. And that's how I feel about the Zillow webinar that I've been preparing for that I started to learn and see so many things. It's, it's really not good. <laughs> and so um, it's, um, it's almost like, um, you know, when you think about the travel agent industry, like they would never go out of business when they were travel agents. And now I, I don't know people that use travel agents. That industry really was decimated by the internet. And of course, malls have been replaced by Amazon. And, and it's always gradual, Curtis. You never right. really see it, right? And so um, there is a fundamental thing that's happening as far as um, the Zillow that the industry needs to pay attention to. And, um, but to answer your question, there's a couple of things that need to happen. Number one is I think real estate agents should not just get upset about things and not take action based on it. They should do something about it. You know, if they care about their industry, there are things that everybody can do. You know, and that's getting more involved in their their board or their MLS. I mean, that's that's a simple thing that everybody can do. So that's number one. Number two is you should carve out your own path that's not depending on a company that maybe you're competing with. You know, um, I don't want to spend all the time talking about that with Zillow, but you know, Zillow now is not a vendor; they're a brokerage, they're a real estate broker. And um, if I was Power Realty and you were XYZ Realty, uh, or let's use something we might relate to Century, if I was Century 21, you were Remax, I wouldn't give you my money to advertise me. And any agent that gives money to Zillow, that's what they're doing because they are a brokerage. So, so what you need to do is carve out your own path that isn't dependent on that outside company to generate your business. And a lot of that has to do with building relationships with people. You know, people list with people. Um, um, buyers work with people. There's gotta be that trust. So the better we are, or better an agent is at connecting with people and getting, um, building those relationships and following up and networking, that'll help solidify their network. We don't have to get all the business, but if we have some of my best agents make three, 400 grand a year, Curtis, off of just, or no, I shouldn't say off of, but from just like a hundred clients because those hundred clients, they're advocates of that agent. They recommend that agent. They become the silent salesperson for that agent. So, um, but anyway, um, so that's how you not get distracted by the news is you take action and that's to contribute to your industry and you take action for yourself and your family. So that's amazing. Thank you. What are your top little trick strategies, if you will, to help one of your buyer's agents win the deal, like to get their offer accepted? Because yeah, right great, now it's happened a lot. Great question. So one of the things is removing, of course, all contingencies. Whatever you can remove, remove it. That's number one. Number two is uh, one of my favorites is having the uh, buyer agree to make two mortgage applications, not one. Mm. The, the one application would be the one that the selling agents uh, help the agent, help the buyer get pre-qualified. Da 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 da. 
but the second application uh, would be with the listing agent. So what we would do is we would tell the listing agent, listen, my buyer, they're really committed. They really want this property to help relieve any concern that you might possibly have. They're gonna make two mortgage applications. Uh, whichever one is, goes through and is the best, one is gonna be with their current mortgage lender, but the other one is whoever you choose, Mr. and Mrs. Listing Agent. Wow. And why that's really powerful is because a listing agent, you know, if you tell, they know, right? If, if a selling agent brings me an offer, I'm the listing agent, say, yeah, they're pre-qualified. I, as a realtor, you know, as well, that, you know, I, I, I wouldn't take that to the bank, but that's good that they have that. But if now that agent says, Daryl, I'll put my buyers also imply with your lender. Well, now I feel more secure that this deal is going to go through because I know my lender. And I know my lender tells me they, when we get this loan, they'll get the loan. So now I have uh, more commitment to putting that deal together, knowing that I can have some say in the matter, if you will. Mm. So those are a couple of the suggestions I have. And, you know, one of the others, which is a big, which is a big challenge for agents, but I'm a big fan of this too. And that is um, having the offer written where it says in there it's contingent on the selling agent presenting it directly to the homeowner with the listing agent. In other words, um, even though how the process is, is that the all these offers are given to the listing agent and the listing agent presents them, that as a selling agent, my offer, I would it would be contingent on me presenting it myself. Now, I'm going to do it with the listing agent, but I want to be able to present the, the offer to the homeowner because I can present it better than anybody can. Why? Because I know my buyers. I've been working with my buyers. I know things about my buyers that may not be reflected on the paper. And um, some agents, that takes a little bit of guts to do, but you've got a better shot in getting your offer accepted that way. And the last one too, Curtis, is the love letter. There's Now, I've been teaching the love letter for... Um, since I've been a speaker, so over 30 years. And some people said that they learned it from me, like they never heard about it. I don't know if I created it. I'll be honest, I don't remember, but I've been teaching it for 30 <laughs> years. And um, I've time and time again, I've had agents say it was because of the love letter that their deal got accepted. Now, all of a sudden with the fair housing, people say, well, you really can't do the love letter because it could discriminate, blah, blah, blah. And I'm not gonna get into that now, but it's just not accurate. It's not true whatsoever. So it's much ado about nothing. There's never not been one loss. Actually, you know, Curtis, now for now, just as a side note, when I started hearing people say, well, you're not supposed to do love letter because the fair has a dee dee dot. So I hired my, my, my law firm and, and not mine, but my, my, and I said, do me a favor. They have this thing called WEX something, WEX law. It's like an MLS of law cases. Huh. So, so a, a, an attorney can go into this database and search for law, uh, lawsuits and decisions and cases based on what they're looking for. Mm. So I hired the, my, my lawyers to go in there and find a lawsuit based on discrimination because of the love letter. You know how many they found? Zero. No. So. <laughs> you know, share a little bit more about the love letter. It's, it's really just a story about why these buyers not only want the house, deserve the house kind of thing or. Yeah, there's, um, the, the concept of the love letter, so first of all, what happens is the buyer would write a letter to the seller telling yes. the seller why they're very excited about possibly being the next family to live in this home and raise mm -hmm. their family. And so they go through that and why they, you know, they looked at many houses, this house, uh, like one of our letters that, that we use as an example says, you know, we've looked at many houses, but none had the same feelings as yours did when we walked into your home. We felt, the, we felt the love of 27 years that you guys have been living in. We felt like we were being hugged. I mean, it's really a gushy letter. And it's a real letter from a real buyer. And what happens, and the reason why this is so powerful is because any homeowner who's selling a home, you know, that's been in there more than just a handful of years, you probably have heard this expression where people say, oh my gosh, this house, if these walls could talk. Mm -hmm. You know, for, for a homeowner selling their home, it, they almost look at that deed like a family tree. Like they know who owned the house before them and who owned it before them. So there's a certain amount of responsibility that the homeowner feels yeah. of passing the deed to the next family 
that's going to love and appreciate as much as they have. Mm. So what the love letter does is it bridges the humans in, uh, together, the humanistic part of the transaction that sometimes gets lost, especially in, in negotiations or with real, real estate agents. We focus on money, 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 which of course, that's part of our job is to help get the homeowner as much money as we can when we're the listing agent. But there's that human aspect that gets, that gets lost. One of the deals that I remember, Curtis, um, was there was um, this, this woman who was moving with her child. For, and, and again, people get weirded about the fair housing. It's not a problem. Anyway, they were moving. She was a widow. She had this child. She was moving to, to Long Island and they were moving from a place where it was not good for the kid. There was guns, there were shootings. It was a bad neighborhood they were moving from. And um, they didn't have a backyard. So they expressed how awesome this would be for their child and the grandchildren to live in a home with a big backyard and yada, yada, yada. And in the letter, they said, now I can't offer you a whole lot of money but I want you to know that if given the chance, we're going to appreciate this and we're going to raise our family. You know, blah, blah, blah. Well, those wow. homeowners, I'm, getting being, I'm telling you, man, when I read the letter in class, now this goes back many years ago, the whole class was crying. I'm crying reading this letter. And the homeowner, Curtis, didn't even count it. They just accepted the offer. Wow. And, and the reason, yeah, man, the reason why it's so awesome is because we all got, we all got, like the realtors got it. I got it. The homeowners got. It. We were making a difference in a in a family's life, and wow. um, that that's important in my opinion. So, wow, wow. That, I mean, that's awesome. That's a great. That's an absolutely great story. So, if you're paying attention, um, there's three different things you can do to help get your offer accepted. One, which you talk about, putting every contingency that you possibly can. Um, number two, get two mortgage pre-qualifications, one from your uh, mortgage guy, and then other from the seller's choice. Yep, and then number yep. three, the, the love letter. That's amazing. Yep, yep, yep. And I, mean, I know you have a lot more tricks, but we'll, we'll, we'll keep it to three. <laughs> so in wrapping up, you know, you've seen, you've seen everything um, in 30 years of real estate. <laughs> I mean, you've been there way before the internet. <laughs> And when there was no yes. such thing as electronic anything. <laughs> um, I was, listen, I, yeah, I, I, tell, I tell people, I, I got a real estate BC before computers. <laughs> um, but yes. And, you know, at the, at the core, it stayed the same because it's, it's people working with people and obviously a lot of technology around it. Um, and wrapping up, what, what, uh, what's, what's some advice you have for some agents besides getting involved with your MLS on moving forward, what would be some advice that you would want people to walk away with from this podcast? Um, I think it's what I said about, um, you know, what we teach our power agents, which, you know, um, you know, I would love all realtors uh, to live that way, that what we teach the power agents, which is we don't sell people, we serve people, and that uh, we should focus on not closing people, but coaching people. And, um, you know, and just those two distinctions, I think, are, are really powerful because, first of all, when it comes to the coaching, not closing, people don't want to be closed. They want to be coached. They want to come to a realtor to help them uh, get through the maze of real estate, you know, the overwhelmness, the confusion of it all, that that is uh, what we bring to the table for them. Uh, is to help them see the choices that they have. And that's what a coach does, right? A, a person can be overwhelmed or confused or worried or, um, yeah, just overwhelmed like fog. And what an agent does is help lift the fog by showing people, here's your choice. You can do this or you can do that. And here is the results and possible consequences based on your choice. But it's your choice. So people choose. And um, anyway, that's that's the one thing. And the, and the serving, not selling is, uh, you know, when it comes to selling, how do we think about it, Curtis? And I'll, we'll leave on this. Uh, I'll ask agents, especially in a live seminar, I'll say when you when a homeowner hires you as their listing agent, what is the end result that they're committed to? And every audience will always say the same thing. Sell my house. 
And I tell them, no, that's not it. See, when you think about it, people are closing a chapter in their life, moving somewhere, physically moving somewhere, but it's also emotionally. Like they're writing a whole new chapter in their life. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're doing that for reasons. It could be for a job relocation. It could be for a bigger home because they have a child on the way. It could be they're going through divorce and they need to separate. The point is selling the house is not what people are committed to. They're committed to their next level in life and selling the house is just a means to that end. So what we do as real estate professionals, especially when we're on the listing side, is not sell the house, but help people get to their next level. And if you really get that, now you're serving and not selling. Mm -hmm. Now you're coaching and not closing. So anyway, that's the last thing I would leave people with is that distinction. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for hopping on and sharing all this wisdom. Can't wait to share it out with all of our community, which we have a lot of real estate agents in, in our community here. So thank you once again for taking the time. I know you're a busy man. Thank you, Curtis. Thanks for doing this thank for the you. industry. Appreciate it, man. Have a great day. Take care. Bye. Hey there, it's Curtis again. If you have not downloaded the seven most powerful referral secrets, hop on over to referralsecrets.com. It's free. That's simply referralsecrets.com. Also, we give away prizes every week to our subscribers. So make sure you click the subscribe button. Thank you again for listening to another episode of Referral Secrets. 